We're honored to be joined by Dr. Lynette Fraga, who is Chief Executive Officer of an organization called Child Care Aware of America. Good to see you, Doctor. Hello, nice to be here. Great to see you as well. This is part of our larger Reimagine Child Care Initiative, all about uh, public awareness around affordable, accessible, quality child care. Tell everyone what your organization is as we put the website up. Sure. Child Care Aware of America is a national nonprofit membership organization that focuses all of its efforts on ensuring that parents have access to quality, affordable, accessible child care. And we do that through policy change, research, data, practice, wanting to ensure that our early care and education providers and our families are all supported in the best interest of making sure children and communities thrive. Hmm. Doctor, how severely has COVID, as we tape on the 20th of July, I'll be seen later. How severely has COVID impacted the child care industry and more importantly, the children in it and the parents of those children? So firstly, the, thank you again for focusing on this topic. And um, the pandemic has severely challenged the child care system. Let's be clear, prior to the pandemic, the um, child care system was certainly at definitely fractured, if not at the breaking point. And through the pandemic, um, because of the challenges um, that we all seen um, globally, uh, it's really created a crisis. Um, and we are really at the breaking point at this point, early care and education providers um, unable to, um, to work, um, programs unable to stay open, the challenges of families having access to care, the expense of ensuring health and safety, all multiplies and exponentially contributes to a real challenge and concerning trends we're seeing even today as we um, continue to stay in the midst truly in the pandemic. What's the broader impact of that for our nation? Fewfold. Um, firstly, we have been saying since the beginning of the pandemic, no child care, no recovery. Uh, if families don't have access to child care, they can't go back to work. Um, if um, children don't have quality programs, uh, then they also are suffering in their ability to be able to thrive um, and, and with their readiness for school. So it truly is a significant impact on, um, on our communities, on our employers, on our parents, on families, earning potential. Um, for example, one in five parents have shared that, um, that disruptions in childcare, disruptions in in-person in schooling have either decreased their hours significantly or have um, created the inability for them to actually be able to return to work. Uh, that is severe, not only for the individual parents, but for the families and their ability to be able to support their own, um, their own households. It's, it's really a challenge. But doctor, the impact has not been felt evenly across the board. It's been felt disproportionately. And some people may be tired of hearing about it, but we're not tired of talking about it because it's, it's horrific and it's embarrassing. Talk about it. It is disproportionate. There, again, have been existing disparities, um, not only for um, the ability for families to access care. We're talking about care that is expensive, that, um, that many families are unable to access it. For many families, um, for example, for single parents, it could be upwards of 50% of your income in order to pay for care. Then layer on that, um, that um, early childhood educators themselves only make, for example, $12, $12-ish an hour as a median income nationally. That is hardly a living wage. Then you speak into the fact that there is um, that disproportionately women of color, 40% um, of, of the early care and education workforce are women of color. And most of the workforce, of course, are women um, in early care and education. So we are looking at this issue in terms of disparities and inequities, not only as a workforce, but also in terms of access to care. And there are child care deserts all over the United States where families don't have access to quality care. And that's really it, excuse, me, excuse me for interrupting, Dr. Of is course. it forcing a disproportionate number of women to literally leave the workforce? Yes. So what we've seen in 2020 is 20 is 2 million women have left have left the workforce. 
Um, and what we're also seeing is that for women who are leaving the workforce, uh, we may not get back to pre-pandemic levels until 2024, which is much longer than men returning to work. So we're really seeing a disproportionate impact on many levels for women, women of color, for families who have the inability to be able to access care, for the um, unaffordability of care. So there really is a significant challenge multifold across the childcare system. So I want to ask you about the Biden administration and their policies around child care, the tax credits, um, uh, early childhood education, et cetera. But, but real quick, compare New Jersey to the rest of the nation as it relates to the child care um, environment and, and, and situation. So in New Jersey, um, you all are also uh, experiencing challenges in terms of affordability. It does um, it is significantly um, expensive, um, again, upwards of almost 50% for a single parent, 13% of a household income um, for um, a married couple with children. Um, not to mention our really housing costs. Not to mention housing costs. Well, for many across the United States, and New Jersey is no exception, childcare often exceeds the cost of, of rent or mortgage um, for your home. So it really is a significant part of um, household income. And in New Jersey as well, just like in the rest of the United States, there's a real struggle in identifying staff um, for programs to work at um, early care and education programs. So many early care and education providers were not able to keep their jobs through the pandemic. Um, and many of them are not returning um, to our early care and education workforce. And staff shortages are also becoming a real problem. So um, programs, absent staff, uh, staff are what makes the magic happen in child care. Uh, and so absent staff are really running into a huge problem in terms of access to, to quality programs, notwithstanding the challenges we already have with the expense associated with child care. Before I let you go, the Biden administration, child, uh, is the child tax credit? Mm -hmm, the child tax credit. Mm -hmm. What is it? And again, what is the impact? There, so, so firstly, the child tax credit, um, at, you know, the idea that, um, you know, 50% of children can be pulled out of poverty as a result of um, the child tax credit and dollars going to families with children to really help with the expense is incredibly beneficial um, to families and um, as we're looking at additional proposals that are on the table, um, like the American Jobs Plan, which helps to contribute to um, the facilities and the structures of child care um, of child care programs, like lead mitigation, for example, is incredibly important, and that lives within the American Jobs Plan. And it's really important to, again, as I said before, the magic happens with early care and education providers, so we have to pay attention to staff. And that's where the American Families Plan comes in, really paying attention to the early childhood workforce and investing in that workforce for years to come. And there are other congressional bills also out there that can also speak into um, the investment needed for a sustainable changed system of child care. We can't go back pre-pandemic, in fact, because it was already fractured. We want to build a better system as we move forward in service to our children and families so they can thrive. Well said, Dr. Fraga. Listen, we thank you for joining us and being part of our public awareness initiative, public education effort around child care, um, not just in New Jersey, but across the nation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. We'll be right back after this. Think Tank with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the Turrell Fund, supporting reimagined child care. Investors Bank. Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Summit Health, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Johnson & Johnson, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, United Airlines, and by the Adler Aphasia Center. Promotional support provided by NorthJersey.com and Local IQ, part of the USA Today Network, and by CIANJ and Commerce Magazine. Hi, I'm Governor Tom Kane. A dear friend of mine had aphasia which is a language disorder that occurs from a brain injury or a stroke. It robs a person's ability to communicate, but it doesn't affect their intellect. Programs and services offered at the Adler Aphasia Center help to improve my friend's communication skills, as well as her self-confidence and quality of life. Most importantly, she was among people who understood her. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with aphasia, 
there is hope. 